other people that we know were fugitives from slavery, a man by the name of Isaac Bailey. We think he was born about 1816 in Essex County, Virginia, and he was definitely born in slavery. About 1852, he ran away from his wife's, I'm sorry, his owner's second husband. Her first husband died. And when she married the second husband, he didn't like Isaac. So he decided he was going to whip Isaac one day. And Isaac, I don't think he had been whipped before because they liked him. The other master liked him. And so he decided he was going to run away. And he ran away. He was in the woods for quite a while. And eventually he kept going farther and farther north. And he found a Quaker who gave him shelter and took him across the Ohio River to other people who could help him go on to Canada. And he did make it to Canada, and he remained in Canada for a certain length of time. But he, does, he wasn't satisfied in Canada. Maybe he wasn't satisfied because he had left his mother and his wife back in Virginia. So from Canada, he shipped out as a sailor from Quebec. Now, this is all he tells us. And we wish that we could go back and ask them more questions. <laughs> but they give us just the bare minimum. And then they send us on these wild goose chases trying to fill in the blanks. When the Civil War started in 1861, he said he was in New York and he went to serve in a New York Cavalry Regiment as a hostler. A hostler is a person who grooms horses. And when he was in Essex County, Virginia, that was his job for his master was to take care of the horses. So he knew what he was doing in terms of serving with the cavalry again. He did not serve as an enlisted man because in the early years of the Civil War, African Americans could not be enlisted. It wasn't until after Lincoln decided in 1862 that he was going to make some changes that he allowed African Americans to enlist and become full-fledged soldiers in the Union Army. So when he, when Isaac served with the New York Cavalry, he was not enlisted. <laughs> now he tells us, after working with the New York Cavalry, he comes to Grand Haven. Why Grand Haven? Of all the places, why Grand Haven? But this is what he says uh, in an article that was written about him. I was trying to find this person, and this is, this is what we have to do. So I saw in a book that there was an enslaved man by the name of Isaac who ran away from Essex County, and this is Virginia, in September, named Isaac, aged some 35 or 40 years, uh, medium height, of Negroes. He is neither black, but of a brown color. He has rather a long chin. Mm, I don't, some, something's missing here. He has a high forehead and something more than skin deep on the outside bone of, this is how they would write these ads for runaways. They would try to give as close a physical description of the runaway as possible so that you could spot them when you saw them. But anyway, it says, we think it's very probable that he's skulking in the vicinity in the county of Henrico, about five miles from the residence of the late Colonel Gooch, where he has a brother just across the road from Mr. Matthews. I have no doubt if he is in that neighborhood, he frequently goes to the city of Richmond. If you apprehend him and confine him in jail, 
uh, and deliver him to me. And this was written in Rappahannock, Virginia, November 23rd. And it was about 1856. So it would fit this description of Isaac Bailey. I had to write to the Virginia Historical Society and ask them if they had the newspaper, the Richmond Inquirer, with a slave ad in it for this date. And the wonderful librarians, librarians are wonderful people. She said, I will look for it and I will call you back. And a day later she called me back and she said, I have it. I said, no. She said, yes. <laughs> and she copied it and sent it to me. Um, and there it was. And I have the whole thing. I have the whole page of the newspaper. So I have all of the missing letters and everything. But he was interviewed by the Grand Rapids per Eagle. It wasn't the Grand Rapids Press. The Grand Ra no, the Grand Rapids Herald. The Herald. The Herald. And this is where he told his story. And let me see, come on. The Herald put a picture of him in the paper. And it's like, that's him. That's the person they were describing. Mm -hmm. The long chin. The long chin. <laughs> this, you know, I have the, uh, you know, it's a bad, it was in the newspaper. The newspaper is old. I think the news, this article was done in about 1904. And in this article, it says that he's 100 years old. Mm. So he lived a very long time. He eventually left um, Grand Haven and moved to Grand Rapids. And in 1863, when he, it was possible for African Americans to enlist, he enlisted in the Union Army. And he enlisted in the black regiment that was formed in Detroit, which was called the 102nd U.S. Colored Regiment. He served in the war. I have a brother who lives in Washington, D.C., and I said, could you go to the military records and see if you can find an Isaac Bailey? He found him. He found his muster records where he enlisted and in Kent County. And he served in the war. He went to South Carolina with this unit and he was mustered out at, um, in 1865. So I have his military records. So this, he's telling the truth. When he told this story to the news reporter, he was telling the truth. After the war, he said he went back to Grand Haven. And he said he married a woman by the name of Clarissa Bordley in 1867 in Grand Haven. Guess what was in his pension file that my brother got? His marriage certificate from Ottawa County. It says 1867, he married Clarissa Bordley and it gives us the name of the minister who married them. His name was John B. Fisk. So here's a connection. And I've got to do more research on who was this Reverend John B. Fisk, who was in Grand Haven in the 1860s. You could probably find out tomorrow. <laughs> I'll be at work. <laughs> Now, he said his wife, Clarissa, died, and so he and his daughter moved to Grand Rapids, where he worked for a long time and lived till the ripe age of 100 or more. Uh, we don't know exactly the date of his birth because usually the birth date of a person who was enslaved was not recorded, but he was an old man. Um, he died in 1921 which would, would have made him, if he was born in 1816 and he died 
1921. That would have made him a very old man. And he is buried in Grand Rapids in Oak Hill Cemetery. Another person who comes to Ottawa County who was enslaved was a man by the name of Fred Graves. He told his story later, so we know for sure that he was born in Virginia and he was born enslaved. During the Civil War, which started in 1862, he escaped from slavery and made his way to the Union uh, military lines where he served with the Union Army, but not as an enlisted man. They would just attach themselves and say, well, if you need somebody to dig a hole or, you know, whatever work needs to be done, those soldiers, sometimes the, the colonels would allow African Americans to follow them and they would feed them and give them uh, some kind of money. Graves, however, claims to have also worked with the Confederate, no, this is the Union Army. He says that he was with General Burnside at Fredericksburg, and he says that he served as a bodyguard for General Sheridan at Shenandoah Valley. There is no way to validate that unless, we, we, unless one of these generals would have mentioned him in a letter or something. There's just no way. But it, it's possible, you never know. These things show up in the strangest places. After the war was over, Graves said that he went back to Virginia to reunite with his wife. And he had a daughter named Lena, who was born in Virginia in 1866. They had a second child who was born in 1869 in Spring Lake. So they came from Virginia to Spring Lake after the war. He uh, is in Grand Haven in the 1880s. He and his wife worked in the Sheldon Mineral Springs in Grand Haven, giving massages and helping with mineral baths. And that's how he got the name Doc, Doc Graves, by working in the Mineral Springs. We finally have a picture of him. This is Fred Graves himself. In 1898, he was invited to the Grand Haven Women's Club to tell his life story. And that's where he told this story of how he escaped from slavery and ended up in the military, not in the military, but serving the military and eventually coming to Spring Lake. He, re he told this at the women's club that he remembered when he was sold at a slave market, he and his mother were sold for $1,200 in a slave market. Um, in 1880, he was still living in Grand Haven, and there was a woman in the family living with him. Her name was Frances. That was his mother. And she was born in Virginia around 1780. So she would have been born in slavery in Virginia. So somehow he got her back up here with him. Um, so that's my work in history. I still have a lot of work to do to fill in the, the blanks. But with people like Dave back there, that's how I get my information. That's why I like to come and do these talks because you live here and you probably heard some stories or uh, know something or go back and read the old papers or whatever. You can find out things and give me a call, would you? Mm -hmm. If you find out something, give me a call. I would love to write a book about this area, the Underground Railroad activity in this area. That ends my presentation.